Welcome to the Level Up English podcast, the best place to come to practice the English language, learn about the British accent and culture. With me, your host, Michael Lavers. Hello, English learners, and welcome back to the Level Up English podcast. My name is Michael Lavers, and I am delighted to be talking with you for another Wednesday episode. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've had a good week so far. And today, I'm going to be talking about the news. Yes, everything that's going on in the news at the moment. Well, not exactly, but I want to talk about some good phrases, some good vocabulary related to the news also some reasons why you might want to watch the news and reasons why maybe you shouldn't watch the news and a little bit more about that. And then I'm going to talk a bit more about my own personal views on the news and watching the news. And then I think I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a private episode as well because some things are a bit too personal. I don't want to share to the whole world. So I might talk a bit more openly, privately to the members at Level Up English. So remember, if you want to join our private episode each Friday, you can become a member at levelupenglish.school. There'll be a members button at the top. And in addition to the private episodes, you can also get the transcripts for these podcasts. You can get private worksheets for the YouTube videos, worksheets for some podcasts as well group classes we do on a weekly basis, loads of stuff all over there. So levelupenglish.school if that is interesting for you. But yeah, so I think the reason I'm talking about this topic won't be a surprise to many of you because, I mean, I'm sure I'm not alone in thinking the past few years in the news, it's just been crazy, right? There's been things happening all the time. It seems like the world is getting worse and worse all the time. And I, I don't think that is the case. I think a lot of crazy things are happening, but I think there's a lot of good things happening too that we just don't really talk about, right? So I, I think it depends where you look. And I think that's one reason why it's a good topic to talk about and discuss. But I'm sure all of us have had on and off relationships with the news over the past few years. So... I want to talk about the pros and cons of that uh, in a bit. First of all, I want to go over some expressions and talk about it. So over the past couple of years, you might be used to seeing the doom and gloom on the TV every day. This is a good expression. Doom and gloom, it rhymes, it sounds good. Doom means like things that are going to cause something to die. Doom, like horrible things that cause death. Gloom is like from the adjective gloomy. Gloom is a noun. Doom and gloom, they're both nouns. But gloomy means like depressing and dark and boring and grey, right? It's a gloomy day. It's a gloomy, cloudy day in England. So doom and gloom, this kind of phrase, these two words together, it really just means like everything bad, all the bad stuff that can happen Usually it's used when someone's talking about bad things and you might say, oh, enough of all the doom and gloom. Let's be positive. Yeah, let's not talk about bad things. It really just means bad things. It's a nice way to say that. So, you know, in the news these days, we're seeing the doom and gloom about pandemics and viruses and war and economic problems. And every country has their own uh, problems with the economy, with war. Uh, with uh, corruption, uh, with politics, and it's crazy. I think no country is free of these problems. You know, maybe, maybe some you know, countries, the like island nations in the in the ocean, they've got like a hundred people living there. Maybe they don't have these problems, but I don't know. It, it it seems crazy these days, doesn't it? And I think one thing we also have to be careful of is. If you do watch the news, don't put yourself into an echo chamber. This is a good word, an echo chamber. And it's so useful in the days of social media and internet news because a chamber is like a big cave or a big room, let's say. An echo is when a sound 
repeats itself. Like, echo, 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 right? So the reason I have a blanket on the table right now is because I don't want there to be any echo in this room. It avoids any echo, right? And an echo chamber is basically when people only hear news stories that match their own existing opinions. So let's say if you are, if you have a left-wing belief, a political left belief, you only stay in areas that talk about this stuff, you know, you listen to podcasts about left-wing politics, you read books about left-wing politics, but you never get exposed to the right-wing, the opposite side of the political spectrum, the political view, right? And this is called an echo chamber when you never hear any opposing opinions. It's only opinions that agree with your own. And I think it can be quite dangerous because it it forces society to get more and more separate and segregated. And I think we're seeing this a lot at the moment. I think it seems to be a big problem in the US these days, where you've got the left and the right, Republicans and Democrats, and no one can get along. So I'm not perfect, I'm really not that good at this, but I try my best to get left and right side of the spectrum when it comes to politics. I, I disagree with a lot of what they both say, but I think it's good. It's good to disagree and, and think about um, why you disagree, right? So that, that's important. So I guess we should avoid finding ourselves in an echo chamber. Another big keyword that is related to news and internet news is clickbait clickbait this is so annoying i find clickbait is when a video an article kind of tricks you into clicking on their page so it might say something like you'll never guess what happens next like this man earned one million pounds in two days you'll never guess how he did it and you click on the article and it's just totally unrelated it's not even connected to that topic so that's what clickbait is. So it's a really sneaky way to trick people into reading their articles. And it's something that we have to be aware of on the internet, right? Don't fall for clickbait because that just makes it work. You know, we, we want to avoid clickbait as much as possible. But I mean, this is also a problem I have on YouTube, right? I make YouTube videos and I don't want to clickbait people. But honestly, if you don't clickbait, your videos get no views. Like if you just say, I walked around London. No one's going to watch that. It's boring. But if I said something like, I can't believe what I found hidden under London, something like that, it's like, ooh, interesting. I wonder what this is about. And you know, I've never done that, by the way, but obviously that gets much more views. So the, the, the financial system on YouTube and online encourages people to use clickbait, and it's very annoying. The final word I want to share at the beginning here is Polar polarization. It's very hard for me to pronounce this word. To be polarized is an adjective. The noun polarization, right? We've got this word polar here. We've got like the North Pole, South Pole, polar bear, right? So the poles are at the north and south of the world. Polarized is when two things are completely opposite, basically. So polarization is when you know, we have these echo chambers and things get more and more separate. People are more polarised. So you can have very polarising news that causes people to split. So people hate each other. They're really polarised and no one is in the middle. I know many of you listening will be strongly on the left, strongly on the right, perhaps. Maybe there won't be so many of you who are in the middle. Maybe. I'm not I'm only guessing. But this is because society is getting more polarised. Well, that's what they say anyway. So polar polarisation, I don't know why it's so hard for me to say, polarisation is becoming a big problem as well, I believe. I would be interested to know, by the way, if you and your friends have similar political beliefs or you know, would you ever consider being friends with someone from who has a different political belief than you? Some people, many people would say no, I think. My friends, we have similar beliefs, but also, 
you know, some ways quite different. Like, for example, with Brexit, my friends and I were kind of a 50-50 split. Some of us voted to stay, some of us voted to leave. It is a bit confusing why my friends voted that way, but you know, I don't hold it against them. It's their, it's their choice to do that, right? But okay, let's talk a little bit about some of the pros and the cons of watching the news. So a good phrase here is to be in the loop. To be in the loop is like to be up to date, to stay up to date with something. People often say you have to watch the news so you can be in the loop. Stay in the loop with what's going on in the world. If you don't watch the news, then you will be out of the loop. You will be out of the loop. You will be out of the loop. You know, you need to be up to date because it's going to help you vote. It's going to help you uh, just know what's going on and be more informed about the world. So that's one argument. You know, you should stay in the loop, right? And I, I guess one counter argument to that, which I'm always aware of, is it, it, on the one hand, it's good to stay in the loop. But on the other hand, the news is very controlled, isn't it? I think not many people would say the news is unbiased. If something's biased, that means they have some opinion, you know. If I'm writing about the news, I'm going to say England is really good, England is the best. But maybe someone from another country that England has invaded in the past might have a different opinion. England is the worst country in the world. And of course, both of us are biased. We both have some reasons behind what we're saying. So it's very difficult to find unbiased news and therefore the news doesn't give us a true representation of what's happening in the world because you can read you know, the, the news from one side of a war and another side of a war and it's totally different, right? It's, it's really interesting. Another thing to keep in mind, I think this is a con, the negative of the news, is that we love negativity. I think there's so much positivity happening in the world. There's so much progress, improvement and really amazing things happening. But the news is mostly doom and gloom. It's mostly negative because that's what generates more clicks. Clicking on the article. The negative, the news articles that cause people more outrage and anger, these get more clicks and therefore it makes the companies more money. So because of that, we don't really hear about good stuff. And that really does play a big role. It has a big effect on our mental health, doesn't it? You know, we have the weight of the world on our shoulders, which means the pressure over the whole world pushing us down like a burden. And I think it's not natural to feel that way. You know, humans haven't evolved to learn about the entire world's news. It's, it's not natural for our tiny little monkey minds, you know? <laughs> And of course, there are websites and resources where you can find uh, positive news, but they're just not so popular because it, it's like, say, from my point of view, if I see a YouTube comment that says, great video, Michael, I thought, oh, that's nice. But then I keep scrolling. If I see one that says, Michael, you're a horrible teacher. I really hate your channel. Then I, I look at that one. I think about it for the entire day. So negativity is much, much more obvious to us than positive things, right? So that's something to keep in mind. And of course, if you don't watch the news, people will accuse you of like living under a rock. Another good expression here. Usually it's like, if someone doesn't know about something, you can say, where have you been? Have you been living under a rock for the past year? You know, if someone says, What's COVID-19? Huh? I've never heard of that. What is that? You say, what? Have you been living under a rock? How have you not heard about this? This is a worldwide pandemic. <laughs> so have you been living under a rock? It's a great question to ask someone when they don't know something that everyone else knows. I think one big positive about not staying in the loop and not watching the news is that you'll just be much, much happier, right? You will not have that stress in your daily life and Perhaps you could even argue that that's going to allow you to be a better citizen, right? It's like that old adage, the old metaphor, analogy of you need to put on uh, your own 
oxygen mask before other people's. So help yourself first before you can help other people. And if you're the kind of person who's watching the news all the time, you know, constantly you're addicted to the news, you're hooked on the news, then it's going to really affect your mental health and you're not going to be at your best to help others in the world, right? You're not going to be able to be a good friend, a good family member, a, you know, whatever you do with your time, donate your time to help people. You're not going to be able to do that well if you are drowning in negativity and anxiety. So I think that's just one thing to consider that news isn't necessarily always a good thing. Sometimes being out of the loop can be a good thing. And I mean, I know some people will argue if it's really important, I will hear about it. You know, a friend will tell me, I'll see it on a shop window or something like that. And yeah, I think it's interesting. Personally, I, I, I've had like an on and off relationship with the news. I really never watched the news and then COVID happened, the pandemic happened and I was watching every day. Uh, I say watching, it was really on the internet. So it was consuming the news on the internet. And I was following the infection numbers. I was looking at the news articles and to some extent it was useful because if you didn't watch the news, you didn't know what the rules were, you know, like, can you go outside? Can you go to the gym? You didn't know this stuff. You had to watch the news to find out mostly. There were some benefits. However, it was also very, very damaging to, I think, all of our health to be watching that infection line go up every day, causing us that stress. And it was quite tough. So then I went through like a break. I, I, I took a break from the news. Then I went back into it again. I took another break. I go on and off. At the moment, I, I've kind of come to the realisation that I can get a bit too addicted and I'm much more aware of how my own body, my mind reacts to the news. It causes me anxiety and stress. It affects my health. So at the moment, I'm trying to give kind of a, I'm having a detox from the news. This word detox is great. It can be used in many different situations. To detoxify, D is kind of take away, remove toxins from your system. If there's something bad, you want to detox, you might cut it out. You want to detox from sugar, stop eating sugar. You want to detox from technology, stop using technology. For a short time, it's not, it's not necessarily permanent. So I'm going through a news detox right now. Well, I'm not reading the news, I'm not watching the news, I'm just focusing on my mental health. And you know, maybe I'll, I'll come back to it in the future. But at the moment, I am putting my mental health first. And I know many people might say like, you know, other countries are going through war, they're going through political problems and, and horrible things. The least you could do is learn about it, Michael, stay informed. And honestly, it makes me so sad to see all the things happening in the world. I really feel strongly about so many things happening right now. Um, and you know, I, I have done things like donated, I've, I've done what I can, but there's a very limited amount of things I can do. If I see some big, you know, uh, financial crash in another country, there's not much that I can do as an individual. So watching this news every day is not really doing anyone any benefit, in my opinion. Let me know if you disagree, though. I'm, I'm more than happy to hear another opinion. Let me know what you think. I think I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on the private podcast this week about my own views with the news and some something that really helped me, actually, something that I think might help you as well. My challenge for you, though, I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment on this episode, which is going to be levelupenglish.school slash podcast 177. Leave a comment. Let me know some good news you have heard recently. Let's spread some positivity. Let me know some good news you've heard. Um, we've got enough bad news in the world, right? Let's focus on some good stuff. So let me know what you've heard. For me, one of the most exciting positive stories is the... It's often about space and science and technology. And it's the, the James Webb telescope uh, from NASA capturing these amazing images 
of the universe from so many what billions or years ago or, or whatever it is, I don't know. And it's just so beautiful. It's amazing to see such high quality photos of of our universe from very far away. It's really incredible. So I, I can't wait to see more photos that they take. And I think that's really positive that we're learning about it. And hopefully we're going to get a lot from that. Okay, let's slide into some podcast reviews now. I've got a couple short ones to say thank you to uh, today. I've got one here from Mayar610, ah, who I just realised is one of my private lesson students. So hello to you. Um, very nice to see a, a review from you. Thank you. And this is, hello, Michael. I hope you are well. You are the best with some hearts. Thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Uh, this was left kind of recently, but you won't hear this for a while. But thank you so much. Another one here from Sarah or Sarah, Sarah. I don't know how you pronounce it. S Sarah, Sarah, Let's Sarah. That sounds good. Sarah Alkani, who says, thank you so much, teacher Michael. But can you give us advice that will help us to learn English? Sure. Yeah. I mean, thank you for the review. But yeah, I mean, in every episode, I try to give you some advice. So I don't know exactly what you're asking, but hopefully these episodes are helping you. Thank you. One more from Abia from KSA, who says, Hey, this is my first time to write here. I have started listening to your podcast for two weeks. Thanks. I hope I improve. Thanks a lot. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you will improve your listing at least and maybe get some good ideas as well. But thank you, Abia, and everyone else for your reviews. Very kind of you. Let's finish today with a quote from my Instagram page. I've got a picture today of my wife walking in a park. I think we were on our way to go shopping or something like that. Beautiful summer's day with nice fluffy clouds in the sky. And it's very nice. But the quote here is from Margaret Lawrence, who says, It's not what we have in life, but who we have in our life that matters. It's not what we have, it's who we have. So this is a nice reminder that people are so important in life. And of course, I want to relate it to language learning, right? The main reason we learn a language is to communicate. You know, that's the purpose of language, right? To share ideas with other people. And if you're learning English, as I know you are, think about how often do you talk to other people in English? It is great to listen and read and, and get that input. But I think really what a lot of us forget is that connection with other people. And when we can use our language skills to connect with others, everything becomes so much more enjoyable, so much fun, and give it a go. See what you can do. So yeah, that's a nice reminder there. But I suppose I'll leave it here for today. So thank you very, very, very much for watching. Remember, you can watch on YouTube or listen on the podcast app. So thank you for listening or watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will either see you this Friday for a private podcast episode or next Wednesday for another fun-filled episode for 178. Wow. We're coming up to um, 200. I wonder if you have any ideas of what I should do for 200, let me know. It's a big one, right? A big one. But thank you again and I'll see you then. Goodbye. You have been listening to the Level Up English podcast. If you would like to leave a question to be answered on a future episode, then please go to levelupenglish.school forward slash podcast. That's levelupenglish.school slash podcast. And I'll answer your question on a future episode. Thanks for listening.